so welcome to the boat review of Belmore that I've hired from Barnes Brincraft based in Wroxham. Now I'm afraid as I'm moored here at the moorings for St Bennett's Abbey it's a rather windy spring day so I'm going to conduct the tour of the aft part of the boat quite quickly and then we're getting out of the wind because I know that there's a lot of noise on the microphones of the camera. So here we are, this is the aft well of Belmore and Belmore is very similar to Belmore TC and the TC standing for twin cabin. This doesn't have that twin cabin arrangement but otherwise it's identical here as you can see if you've watched my Belmore TC review. However with Belmore you do get the soft cushions instead of just sitting on here. And under here you'll find your rond anchors and the front vinyl screen cover. So if you hire the boat and you're wondering where the curtains are for the front screens for privacy, it's under here. And I've washed it so it's all nice and good to go. Here as you can see is this great outdoor space. Apologies again for the wind. You come through these large sliding doors, there's a light outside as well, so that at night time on a nice summer's evening you can turn that on and sit out here. So it really is a lovely area to be, nice and safe because of the high sides, these grab rails. For stern mooring this just opens out and you can step right out. And then because you've got these steps, so depending on the size of the key heading you've stern moored against or rise and fall of tides, you're still going to be able to step on and off safely whilst grabbing on here of course. So that's the outside space. It's a lovely boat to have this in. It's quite spacious actually. You can fit quite a few people out here. Let's go into the saloon and wheelhouse. So you join me here in the saloon slash wheelhouse of Belmore. And unlike Belmore TC, which is identical in a lot of respects, you actually have two seating areas, so I'll discuss that in a moment. This is, however, a tall boat, both by getting on and off with the freeboard, so if you're less agile, a little bit older, not going to be the boat for you because of that high freeboard. And also the air draft, that's how high the boat is out of the water, it's quite high. So it is able to go under Ladden Bridge, St Olaf's, down through Yarmouth, I did it all myself, of course it's not going to go under Rocks and Potter Higham, etc. But you do have to be careful and plan your tides with when you want to go under the bridges and you'll be fine. But if you're not sure, just give Barnes a call on the phone and say, for example, look I'm at Ladden Bridge, it's saying 8 foot 3, do you think I can go under? So don't take a risk as they give them a call, but be aware these are tall boats. So just thought I'd point that out to you. So let's have a look around at the saloon here. And as you can probably tell, now we're inside. It's really quiet, even though that gusting wind, nice well insulated boat, there's no drafts, you're not going to find gaps around windows and stuff that's going to annoy you out of season. The heating system is something else on this boat, I'll discuss that as well. But let's look at what you get in the saloon. So as you can see, you've got these lovely sliding doors that look right outside, really large amounts of light on these uh, style boats, and again You've got this ability, if it was a nice day, to have these open and just step outside while you're going along. It's nice and safe, as I said. These are nice high decks with the rails around them as well. But you've also, inside, got this seating area. Now, as I say, I will be sort of reverting back to Belmore TC. Uh, you can look at that review. There's a link below this video to go and look at the Belmore TC review. But on Belmore TC, this is it. This is your seating area. On this boat, this is just one, as I said, of two. Underneath you've got these large storage drawers and they really do go back a nice long way. You can fit a lot of stuff in there. Of course you've got your Holly Antique flooring. Heater out that there which is of course you know fully adjustable. But you've also got one there. But it doesn't end there because over here you've got another heating out there. Now this is what's called a wet system and what happens is unlike normal warm air heating systems on most boats on here it actually sort of boils the water, not quite boiling but very hot it pumps that hot water through the boat and then behind those panels like down here there's a matrix like a little radiator grill with a fan and that blows the hot air out and because heat is maintained more in water than in air it means that unlike other boats we have a really hot hot air heating outlet in the saloon but by the time it gets to the cabins they're really cold 
this they're all warm throughout whether it's the front of the boat or here. There are two thermostats on the boat, one is here in the saloon slash dinette and the other one is in the forward cabin and they're just like with home, they've got the temperature in Celsius on them. Now the heating system when it's switched on, that is just on for heater. That will also heat up your domestic hot water so it means that you don't have to run your engine in the morning to get your hot water on this boat. You put the heater on and it will do it all for you. It may take a little longer, but it will do it. And I found the heating exceptionally good on here. The hot water very hot as well. However, let's say you just wanted that going, but you didn't want the interior of the boat warmed. Well, that's why you come over here, you click on your thermostat all the way down to the bottom, and it will turn the matrix fans off. So now there's no air coming out of these. And so, Basically that's how it regulates the temperature. It will come on and click on and click off as and when the temperature is set. So if I just turn this on, you'll hear the fan start up. And now the fan started up and hot air actually comes out the top and it's really warm. And as I said to you, there's another one of these under the dinette, there's another one of these in the um, front cabin, and there's two um, hot air heat outlets over here, which are your traditional sort of ones, and again you can just turn those off if you don't want it, if it's getting a bit too warm, or you want to you know, direct the air this way. It's fully controllable, it's really nice. So, as I say, really, as far as heating goes, this boat has, and I know there's other boats out there that have this sort of system, Brinks Rhapsody is another one that has the uh, the warm blown air through a matrix that's been got hot through hot water, if that will make sense to you. So um, a normal diesel warm air heater literally is just warming air, and it sends hot air down a pipe, and the longer the pipe and the more outlets, the less oomph there is in the air and of course you lose heat rapidly through air not so much through water. Now then, sit down, lovely, comfortable, just right height for me this is uh, to sit, you've got a nice good quality 19 inch flat screen TV with DVD, it will also take USB so if you've got your movies in the right format on a USB stick just bring that along, plug it in and away you go. Really nice unit here. Be aware though that because this boat is compact, it's only 30 foot long, things like your crockery are stored up here and not where you might expect it in the galley. Really nice latches on these doors, see? And then it's locked. Here is your knives and forks. But as I say, a really nice unit here, lovely wood finish in here, complemented by Barnes's sort of off yellow curtains, real light feeling, that's what I, I sort of feel that this boat is about. And as we move around, as you can see, it continues, big large windows, commanding scene over the marshland and river here. So, while you might get less benefit of a taller boat with you know bridges and getting on and off once you're underway or you're moored up as you can see we're moored at St Bennett's and look at this you have a complete view all the way around really nice comfortable helms chair unlike Belmore TC you see it kind of cuts in Belmore TC goes down there's a great place for the bin to go there and just around here there's another cupboard where you find a bucket and a dustpan and brush Nice footrest, a bit higher than Belmore TC, more comfortable to drive. Smooth hydraulic steering, it really is just that smooth. A comprehensive helm that gives you an awful lot of information. So let's start over here, obviously you've got your basics which is your engine oil PSI. Then you've got your 12 volts system. It's a 12 volt boat. Some of Barnes Sprint Craft boats run on 24 volts. This is 12 volts. And your engine coolant temperature. There's no start stop button on here. It's just like a car. You turn it off and it's off. And obviously to start the engine. It's a quiet engine. I'll just give a demonstration. It may sound loud on the um, microphones of the camera, but trust me, as boat engines go very well insulated.
and as I say you just turn it off and away you go these is your trip switches if any one of these should trip off it means there's a problem so go and investigate if you can't easily fix it of course call the boat yard you've got a 12 volt accessory socket here for charging things like your phones but don't worry if you you know haven't got adapters and so on and so forth this is 4 240 volt boat so you've got 1500 watt inverter so you can bring along your laptop iPads phones you name it bring along your straighteners hair dryers etc as long as they're no more than 1500 watts but please please remember whatever the boat whoever the boat is from if you're going to use any of these items run your engine at about 1000 to 1200 rpm when you're using them because they do sap so much power out of the 12 volt battery system and that just helps mitigate that power loss you've got a rev counter your bilge pump wiper and horn a heating system i'll turn that on in a moment and just show you this a toilet gauge so you know if you need a pump out or not with these ones here when it gets to high start considering a pump out because when that gets full that really is full so if it was me if that went to amber i'd think right okay i know i'm going to go for a pump out i'll go and get a pump out it's got a fuel tank i've used well you can just see how much i've used there and um, this is a 10 night break and i've been everywhere i mean i've been from Wroxham right the way down to Orton Broad i've been to Loddon i've been to Norwich so back up to the north back to Potter High and Womack Water you know about the only place i haven't been is up to Stanham on the River Ant and some of the places like South Walsham but you know lots of miles and very economical cruising this really is quite a lightweight boat for the size of engine in it so really i'm being serious here three mile an hour tick over thousand rpms four mile an hour about 1350 you know 1400 you're looking at five and you know depending on what the tide's doing but you don't need a lot of revs to get to six mile an hour um, so it is restricted uh, to about 1800 rpm um, and trust me you won't even need to go there that sort of speed over braiding you're doing sort of eight miles an hour you yeah, have got bow thrusters and they work very well indeed you've got the good old fashioned JVC radio CD player with auxiliary input so you can bring your own tunes and plug that in and a really nice dash slightly different to, to Belmore TC's in as much as this is moulded fibreglass this is an ideal place to you know rest a map you've got your throttle over here standard Morse control you know uh, forward backward you pull it out for out of gear and you let go in your ring gear really nice windscreen wiper that is uh, most effective and again as I was saying to you this is the view from the helm so you can really see all the way around you know what's coming up behind stern on moorings it's a lovely boat to, to helm from and because it's not covered with this shiny gel coat we've got this nice vinyl here you don't get those nasty reflections so much on your windscreen during sunny days so that's an overview of the saloon as you can see there's places to put things this is for your um, tea towels just to you know put them in here um, but otherwise a very nice very spacious clean tidy boat let's go down to the dining area and the galley next so this is the major big difference between this boat and Belmore TC in as much as this area behind me is a cabin on Belmore TC hence twin cabin just a single nice cute cozy cabin but here I think this is more practical with a convertible double dinette so this boat will sleep four but it'd be snug if, if I'm being honest with you so probably you know small family young kid yep yeah, great four adults not such a good idea just my opinion but it is a very comfortable space and it's nice not to have to have a folding table every time you want to sit down and sit have a meal have a read whatever you're doing it is a very very large table and it is really rock firm there's not going to be any you know wobbling about on this table here you've also got these storage pockets here to just put your stuff um, it is a small boat but there's plenty of places you can just stash your stuff you know food kitchen towel you name it these seats here nice and comfortable 
The only point I would say is I hired this boat in 2012, it's now 2016, there's not a lot's changed, but as you can see, I think it's just time where the upholstery needs a change. The fridge, very effective, an older model of Bestro, but goes back an enormous long way. You can get so much stuff in that fridge compared to the new smaller ones. They take up about as much space dimensionally, but this one goes back further. More heating outlets down here. Again, we continue with our holly antique flooring. And as I say, if I just sit up here, it's a really nice, cosy place. When you're here in the evening, you've got the lights on, you feel like you're in a proper nice little boat. And it's nice to have this separation between your, you know, saloon over there and your seating area down here. This also serves as a good prep area for when you're, you know, in the galley doing your cooking. There's a mirror there. That's into the head to that door there. You'll note also a carbon monoxide alarm system. This boat uses gas, which as far as Barnes Brinkcraft is concerned is becoming quite a rarity. I actually prefer the gas system on boats. I know it's a bit antiquated. There's an awful lot of risk involved whether you're a privateer or a higher fleet owner with certification every year that you have to go through, especially if you're a higher yard. Um, similar to the landlord gas safety inspection you might have if you were a landlord letting a property out to tenants. But then there's the gas bottles, the pipes, the risk of leaks, carbon monoxide poisoning, ventilation. There's a whole host of issues. If you can get rid of the gas and have electric, you take all of that away. The problem is, is it a bit too much of a compromise? Because when you have electric hobs, obviously you're on a 12 volt or 24 volt system on a boat. That takes an awful lot of power. So then you're into running the engine for longer periods of cooking or, for example, having a generator on board. And you can't do as much with an electric one or two hob as an old fashioned four ring hob oven and grill that's powered by gas. Again, just a personal opinion of mine. Lots of people that holler down the Norfolk Broads now, they like to go out and there's increasingly nice places, especially on the Southern Rivers, for very decent food. But I just thought I'd draw that attention to you. This is currently a gas boat as far as your cooking goes. So just across the way from the diner is the small galley and while it's compact it's very well laid out and it's under these huge windows so the light really floods in. Also it's open plan so whether someone sat there in the uh, saloon or maybe there at the helm you can talk you've got this sort of openness that you're not sort of tucked away down a corridor or something and even if they're just away there by the dinette you've got this flow you know you can talk and move around and I really like that about this but let me show you what you get in the galley So as you can see here, on Belmore TC, this is where the two burner hob is, but on here you've got this compact sink. Do be aware it is quite a small um, hole for the, the, the plug and stuff, so when you're washing up and stuff, be careful that nothing goes down there because it can block. Um, these shelves here, as you can see, there's no cupboards, you just put your cans of stuff and put them here. It's easy to reach. It's nice to be able to do the washing up and look out on the scene. This also opens, which is handy when you're cooking, maybe you want to let the steam out or the smells of cooking. Over here you've got a microwave oven. Belmore TC doesn't have a microwave and it's a nice spacious one, look at that. Very clean. Again, same rules apply. If you're going to be using the microwave oven, even if it's just for a two minute quick heat up of some rice, run your engine, 1200 RPM out of gear, because these do take an awful lot of power out of the batteries, and if you don't, they won't perform as well, and you just flatten your batteries. Get a nice little bread um, box here for putting stuff. Now here, in 2012, there used to be a four burner hob grill and oven. They've since replaced this with a two burner hob, um, and to be honest with you, it's not such a hardship because you can fit two things on here um, very easily. Whilst the oven is small, and by the way also I must point out, you have to just push that to one side to open it. It's actually very effective. That just keeps that shut so it doesn't open. There's your grill under there. So you've got everything, it's just in a little compact unit. 
Under here you've got your pans. Here again you've got some storage space under the sink. And your mainly used utilities are in here, you know, spoons, knives, spatulas. So really realistically speaking, you know, this is a very compact area, but it's got everything you need. And despite being compact, you can, you know, easily move around in here, whatever you're doing. Also, you can use this as a preparation area, it's a good height for everything. I will draw your attention, however, from the saloon down here there are a couple of steps. So just to show you that as well. And also, I didn't show you earlier, but you do have a large sliding sunroof and four very bright lights. So that is the all-in-one sort of saloon, wheelhouse, dinette and galley, all in the same area but divided just about right I think. So let's next have a look at the heads. So this is the compact head, much the same as Billmore TC. The difference is in here you have a pump action, smaller bowl toilet. This isn't the same um, as the larger bowl with the pedal action that Billmore TC has. So I thought I'd just make you, you know, aware of that point. I personally think that this is the least well designed aspect of both Billmore TC and Belmore because you really don't need such a large worktop and sink in here that could go over to be a corner sink and this could go back a little bit and that would mean that you would just have a little bit more space for a toilet and a little bit more space for a shower tray just you know three four inches can make all the difference oh yes it can when you're talking about the smallest place on a boat the head However, very clean, very nice in here. You've got full frosted glass, but you've also got curtains. You've got a nice bright light. The way the shower works, on Belmore TC you have a separate shower control over here. This is the tap. You take this out of here and you hook it up there. But to turn the water from just coming out like that, you press the button on the top and it turns into a shower head. Clever. When you turn it off, it's gone back to a normal tap. So I like that. I like the fact that here you can put stuff in out of being splashed on when you're having a shower. There's stuff here that can be put down here. And in here, that's where you put your loo roll. And again, there's more storage space in there. But if you use my foot as an example, you can see this is a compact shower area. It's just a compact unit generally speaking. You've got a mirror in here, but you don't spend too much time in here. But um, it is the smallest room, and as I say, completely identical apart from the toilet to Belmore TC. So let's move on finally now to the forward cabin. So we go into the cabin through these uh, double doors as you can see and straight into a really nice open light spacious cabin. Normally V-berth cabins are a bit dingy but because this one here has got this lovely large hatch above which also opens for ventilation uh, it has an outside cover to cover this over if you're worried about you know light coming in in the morning or keeping you awake. Um, but as you can see it's full head height in here and there's lots of storage spaces. These little sort of tuck away things, I'm using this to spare to store the spare bedding and obviously I've been hiring this boat so I didn't strip all the bedding off. Oh, that's all right for the review. Uh, but again more storage space on this side. Again you've got your nice latch, uh, full hanging space here in the wardrobe area. And coming around here you've got a second one a power socket that Belmore TC doesn't have power in uh, the forward cabin, a thermostat for the heating system, reading lights, again nice little addition that Belmore TC hasn't got. So there's these little tiny things that are class between class, little changes that you have. Now the bedding, uh, well not so much the bedding but the, the if you want to call it the foam mattresses on this boat, I think uh, are a little bit too soft. I like something a bit firmer, but other people complain, oh, those boat mattresses were too firm. I like something a bit softer. So I don't suppose there's sort of 
a middle ground that's going to please everyone all of the time but I just thought I'd draw that to your uh, opinion that I find it a little bit too soft Bill Moore TC quite firm this one more soft you whatever your preference is I just thought I'd draw that to your attention but oh my god congratulations Barnes Brentcraft you don't know how good you are you've got proper pillows Herbert Woods they got rid of them Richardson's they've got rid of them we're losing proper pillows. You don't go to a hotel and have sort of these horrible like hospital type pillows. And I know why they're doing it. It's for cleanliness, hygiene, ease of sort of getting rid of them. But they're the sort that are very thin. They have virtually no filling in. And then underneath the cotton pillowcase is like a... Well, I can best describe it as feeling a bit like nappy material. <laughs> It's it's a kind of a plasticky, rustly thing, and it makes a lot of noise when you lay on it. The pillowcase slips around. Not with Barnes Brinkcraft boats. This is hotel quality stuff. They run a lot of apartments as well, and uh, these are very nice, soft but firm, proper pillows. The duvets again, nice proper duvets, and it just makes you know sleeping at night that little bit easier when you've got something comfortable to lay on. So that is the, the front cabin, and so apart from going outside, and it is very windy, but I will do that and show you the exterior of the boat, that is the boat review for Belmore. Um, I like the boat, it's very easy to handle if you're competent and you know easy to get on and off if you're agile, it's a great boat for you. If you're not so agile, not so sure about getting on and off, then I'd go for a, a lower down boat. These types of boats like Brinks Royale, Brinks Duet, they're all kind of sporty and they all have this high freeboard um, and particularly in the case of Belmore and Belmore TC and Regal Star are moulded actually on sea going hulls, similar as Brinks Royale and that is why they've got higher freeboard. Brinks Duet isn't, but then has a, a higher freeboard just for interior space. But I like the fact that this boat has really got its space well proportioned between the cabins, the saloon, the dinette, the outside space. My only gripe really is the design of the heads, where I just think, you know, an easy redesign of, of the basin and that would just provide a few more inches for the shower tray and toilet. Um, maybe the, the, the mattress to be, you know, a bit firmer. Uh, Reupholster some of the seating. Um, but otherwise, I think it's, it's a nice boat. It's a comfortable boat. It's very cosy. It's very warm. It's quiet going underway. What more can you really say? You know, you've got 240 volt power. You've got a microwave. Um, a decent TV. A nice sound system. So, you know, there's a lot of tick boxes, and there are some compromises, but all boats have compromises. I did have a couple of issues with this boat. Um, minor issues, the throttle was a bit stiff, the heating didn't work initially, cycled on, then went off, then came on, and obviously it should just stay on. Um, but they were fixed within 45 minutes. Call the engineer, boom, he's there, found the solution, and away he goes. So that's the other good thing. I can't comment really on other boat yards um, out there. You know, you guys watch these blogs, go and hire with other people maybe. But as far as Barnes Brinkcraft goes, if there's an issue, give them a call. Talk to them. They're friendly. They're not going to shake your head off. You know, oh, it's Saturday. Uh, you know, got no heating. Okay, where are you? We're coming to sort you out. And they do. So, you know... I think some people might, you know, complain about things without giving the company, generally, restaurants, you name it, the opportunity to put things right, first of all. But, from here on Belmore, not TC, uh, that is the boat review. Um, so, a very nice, comfortable boat for a couple or a small family. I'm sorry we couldn't get outside. It is very typically sunshine and showers here on the Norfolk Broads. But, um, as I say, I like these boats and um, maybe one day I'll have to hire Regal Star which is the same as this but it hasn't got gas, it's got an electric hob. So as ever, if you have been, thanks for watching.